One sec. All right, awesome. Hey, what is going on everyone? This is Tam from botacademy.com. Today we have the one and only Anastasia or Anna Green, um, the, the creator of the Warriors chatbot with us. And um, Anna, welcome to um, the interview, the show. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Hi. And Thank you for inviting. I, I was raving about you before the interview, you know, even before this, like today, like I, I was just raving so much about how much I love the Warriors chatbot. I mean, everything is so great about it. And before we dive into that, I want to introduce yourself. On, on Facebook, you, you say you are a mind hacker, entrepreneur, <laughs> chatbot fairy, future billionaire. <laughs> that caught my attention. I was like, whoa, this, this woman's like pretty cool. <laughs> So before we go into the the the, um, the chatbot, I was just curious, like, what is your back? Like, what is the short story of your your backstory, um, and how did you get involved with um, building this chatbot for the Warriors? Um, so my backstory: I've been in tech for the past eight years, um, working around absolutely different kind of projects, mm-hmm. starting from apps, games, e-commerce, B two C, B two B. Uh, whatever and then I started doing a lot of my different startups they were all also in different areas and for the past year I've been um, playing around with bots like I was always interested in new kind of um, technology and markets and since I have some background in UX and in design uh, chatbots came to my attention because it's a completely new way of uh, uh, design of interface of communicating with uh, users so that's why they got me so much <laughs> and yes and after some time I started working with one amazing company who is doing chatbots for different brands who works with chatful I'm sure you're familiar with them yes it's a great platform wait is this the company standfi is that right Yes, yeah, Stanfi is the company I work with uh, on the development side, and Chatful is the platform with what we are using for creating the chatbots. Uh, and basically, the way we work with them is that um, they have clients, they have big brands who come to Chatful um, because I mean they are obviously the leaders of the market of creating chatbots. Um, and then they work with different uh, partners, and one of the partners is Stanfi. And since I've been around with Stanfi and I've already done a couple of bots before, Warriors bots, and they knew me personally, and they knew that I have an uh, entrepreneurial background mm-hmm. because of my startups, uh, they came with a question if we can do it together. That's how the story started. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And I- I'm-, I'm so glad. I was like checking you out on LinkedIn. I was like, Stanfi, and you also do like meditation stuff and a whole other backstory <laughs> with you. And I would talk to you if this interview was like two hours long, but... I know that I want to stay on topic and get to the, the chatbot series. Um, sure. And I just want to compliment you again because, I mean, everything about the chatbot, the Warriors chatbot, and if you guys haven't checked it out, just go on to the, Warriors, the Golden State Warriors homepage. And even if you're not a basketball fan, just go through their chatbot, go through their onboarding, go, receive the broadcast message they get. And it's, it's so funny because I, I don't get excited with any any company sending me emails or messages, but when I see the Warriors send me stuff through Messenger, I'm like, man, <laughs> it's a cool video. It's a cool update or whatever it is. And I, I love it. And I was just curious, like, what what did you do or what did you um, think about specifically when you were designing, like, this awesome, like, conversational UI? Like, w- what was going through your, um, your mind as you were building this chatbot? Um. I think the main success of Warriors Chatbot is the fact that we were working together with the Warriors team. Wow. And so they were really deeply engaged in the process of developing this chatbot. And they are such an amazing team. Um, and they basically helped us understand the, the needs of the fans. And we are personally, as a team of developers, of product developers, we were going through the whole experience of um, fan, of Warriors fans. We went to the game, we went to the stadium, we walked around, we bought hot dogs, we (laughs) bought pizza, we looked at the screen at the game and the atmosphere, and it gave us this feeling like, what's actually going on and what do you need as a fan? And what you would be expecting uh, during your fan journey with the playoffs. Um, so I think it's, it, it took us a lot to actually learn 
what's going on to mm. study. And because if you try to come up with the idea of the bot, um, like from the, I don't know, from the sky, it won't be that realistic. You have to know the actual experience. So mm. that's my <laughs> point. That's amazing. So you just immerse yourself in the, in the warrior's like arena and the world, like physically and literally <laughs> immerse yes. yourself. Yes. And you even had the, the NBA players like actually giving you feedback or helping you with the bot. Um, how much of that was like, was it like you made a rough draft and then they commented like, hey, you should do this or this or you should add this and this. Um, how did that collaboration work? Uh, we started from uh, uh, a long meeting uh, of basically drawing all the journey and thinking about the features that can be useful. Then we tried it through the experience and then um, we started um, scoping um, all these features into one document and realizing like what should be in, what should be out, what's, what's, what we realistically can do because we had quite, um, <laughs> quite fire, fiery deadline. So it was burning every day and we had to stick to the timetable because you can't move playoffs, right? Um, and that's, that gave us this understanding of what should be done first. So in Warriors, on each step, uh, they were um, saying and telling their feedback. And then we were just going with iterations like demo one, demo two, every week. We were showing new functionality, we were getting feedback, we were changing it. We were trying to skip to the points that are the killing features. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I'm just curious because when you guys broadcast content, like I really enjoy the way you guys write it. The, you know, it has a video, text, and then some, call, some kind of call to action. Like today, like you guys sent um, a broadcast where it was like, you know, Warriors versus Jazz, game two. Where are you going to be watching at? And the two quick reply buttons were arena and home. And I was like, what? Like, this, is a whole, this is taking interaction to, and engagement to a whole nother level. Um, for those watching this and want to create those like, awesome experiences, um, you know, when crafting and making their bots more conversational, um, do you have any like, tips or you know, principles that, to help you know, those bot creators have this kind of like, engaging fun with their, with their audience? Yes, of course. So if you're um, creating a bot, you have to think about uh, physical world and like real life of your users. What kind of um, timeline you're entering their life? Like what's going to happen if your bot starts to talk to your customer right now? Are they at home? What are they doing? Uh, are they at work? So what's going to happen? Do they have time to talk to the bot at this moment? Um, because otherwise um, you will be, so I, I've done a lot of different bots and the problem with bots is that they got blocked if they are sending too much, too many notifications. Mm -hmm. um, with Warriors, we have really good numbers so far. So people are not blocking it just because we <clears throat> come in, into the very right moments. Like the fans, they know that when the game is happening, know that it's today. Uh, so all our notifications, they are created and designed on this specific timeline. Got and it. it's, I, th I would say for the bot makers, if you're building the bot that's not just waiting for the uh, users to approach it, but also pushing some information, you should be very conscious about the time uh, mm. and um, action you're going to send to your user. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking on like how often you send it, I feel like the Warriors send this to me very often, like after each quarter or each half, before and after the game. That's like a lot of messages in one day, but somehow I don't block it and I, I like it a lot. And that's like, you know, every quarter plus before and after, maybe one before in the daytime before the game actually starts. That's like seven to 10 messages um, per, uh, per day. And I'm not annoyed by that. How come the Warriors can get away with seven or ten? While if a company try to send seven messages a day, they're gonna be like be blocked or put on spam. Um, I would say that first of all, um, we are lucky to work with Warriors because they already have amazing brands and people love the brand. Uh, and each time the brand you love approaches you, you would feel like good about it if it's smart. But if somebody who you don't really like, I don't know, like. P, yeah, PG or, <laughs> or IRS. <laughs> or, <laughs> can you imagine this kind of things happening? Uh, yeah, I mean, they might have a good brand among accountants, or, but in general, people are um, 
have their um, approach to this kind of brand. So they should be, uh, you have to understand the brand. If the brand is about entertainment, they probably, um, the fans and user, they will probably be happy about this kind of interactions. If it's a celebrity, um, you will also love the celebrity talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. The celebrity you like, you know, like Jennifer Lopez, for example, would send you a selfie. Um, uh, but if it's somebody more, um, you know, it's financial company or some any other kind of company, you should like you should be conscious about the brand you're working with. Definitely. And <laughs> this that's so funny, the IRS having to buy like pay your taxes. Um man, I mean there are like for example, many people watching this are just like, what? I just want to create a chatbot. I, I go on chat field and I just, uh, you know, drag and drop a bunch of stuff. But it seems like you take it to a whole new level. You immerse yourself. You talk to the actual NBA players to give you feedback. You imagine the, you know, the, you, like the end audience, what they're doing on, you know, in the physical world. Like, you know, most chatbot creators are like, I, I never even thought about that kind of stuff. Is, is there anything else that like a lot of chatbot creators like don't realize that they have to do? Um, kind of like knowing the timeline or kind of like um, knowing the physical space or kind of like immersing yourself. Is there anything else that we should be aware about uh, while creating chatbots instead of just like just dragging and dropping? I think it's um, same as with every project. You have to have interactions. Inter yeah, interactions. So basically <laughs> like sprints, you have to release your product and you have to see the way people will use it because you never know what they would expect from this bot um, to do. And even if you are a um, good uh, chatbot maker and you are in control of the conversation, so you design the way, uh, the, bot, the way when it, the bot leads conversation, not the user leads conversation, because everybody knows that AI is not there yet. So we kind of have to be those who are controlling it, <clears throat> the flow of the conversation. So you have to um, release see what people, how people are using, what they're expecting, where they're losing it, and then just build, build up on that. And from the feedback, it's, it's the most valuable, I think, <laughs> thing you can have. It's the feedback of your users. Mm -hmm, definitely. And you mentioned that the warrior, the, the chatbot is doing really well. And you don't have to share the numbers, but how do you know if a bot is doing well or not? Um, what's your metric that you, that you always eye on? Is it open rates? Is it click rates? Um, or number of subscribers? Tell us more. Um, so for bot, um, it depends what kind of bot you're working with. So if it's, if it's a bot with already building audience, you have to see how many, what is the percentage of audience you could engage with this bot. Um, so for example, your page has uh, 1,000, I'm just like, coming up with numbers, 1,000 followers, uh, and you release the bot, and you try to approach your audience with this bot through your page, and then there is only... 10 people who were engaged with a bot who start communicating with it, it's probably the problem of your marketing. So you have to work on the numbers of engagement because it doesn't matter if your bot is great if nobody using it. Yeah. So I think one of the things that bot makers and brands who are working with bots uh, could miss, uh, missing actually a lot, is the marketing um, part. Because bots won't start it to be used by themselves for now. Um, people are not even familiar uh, with what is chatbot. Mm -hmm. So it's on our hands to educate audience. What is it? How to use it? What's the value? What's the benefits? We are like uh, evangelists of the chatbots. Yeah, have, to, have to do it. Um, and about the metrics. So we track, of course, engagement. How people reacting on... Um, broadcasts um what is the percentage of active audience what is the retention rate uh what is the block rate blocking rate mm. um so that's very important metrics especially with blocking that's also one of the things you have to uh, design as a bot maker uh try to give as many control over the notifications to your uh, user base as you can because if your bot is blocked um and the block rate is high you will be put down in a chatbot store mm. in a discover tab so that's a very important metric to track when someone blocks you you mean like they just swipe on your um, name and delete your conversation is that blocked yeah and Got also it. there is i think there is i'm trying to remember because facebook was changing a little bit the uh, interfaces and you can find actually the way to block like you, you say like block as a context yeah got it it was it was in the menu 
one one other thing I love about the chatbot is everything is within Messenger. If you even click on the menus, if you want to shop like for things or find tickets, I find they they ask you like, what are you are shopping for men's, shopping for women's? Everything's within the Messenger experience. I, I'm like I'm assuming that's intentional, but why not just um, you know have that men, main menu item you know go out to an external link? Why have it all within Messenger? Um, I would say that Messenger is becoming um, kind of monopolist of the uh, time of your user. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think it's a good thing because it's very convenient to have everything in one place. Because like, especially in the US and California or like East Coast, we are so busy. We don't have time to go on a different websites, to add our card information everywhere, like send our email, add our emails, consume emails, and do this kind of things. Um, and in Messenger, it's already there. It's really fast and convenient. Mm -hmm. You can connect your card once, then you can make all payments inside the bot uh, or inside the Facebook. Um, same with bookings and everything. So it's Messenger, it's internet inside of the internet. Yeah. Same thing as with WeChat, for example. Got it. Um, and I mean, it's for us to decide if we like it or not, if we're going to use it or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always have choice, right? Got it. And I know we're wrapping up here. One of the last questions I want to ask you is, um, you know, on the outside, it looks like the, the Warriors chatbot looks amazing. Like it looks so perfect. And it looks like the ideal model that we should go for when designing for conversational UI and UX. Um, what was some of the, what was like one or a few of the challenges that you had to face while creating this chatbot? Because it seems like it's, you know, you know, uh, research, immerse yourself, make the chatbot, rough draft. It seems like you had it all figured out. Was that the case? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe it looks good, but it's been a lot of experiments around and a lot of, I would say we still have some gaps uh, that we are covering. Like each time I go to the user inputs and I look what people are asking. And mm -hmm. for example, I just give somebody of my, from my friends to play with a bot and I see like they're saying, good night warriors and bot doesn't understand that. <laughs> and I'm like, oops, <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's mean. It's, it can never be perfect, but yeah. it's going to be better and better with each uh, time you, you make new release. So when someone says good night, are you going to make a like, default response saying like, you know, good night back to you or, or something like that? Yeah. So for example, if you uh, text, um, if, Warrior, if, if Warrior is going to win this game or something around it uh, to Warrior's chatbot, it will respond to that like, I don't know the future, <laughs> but... <laughs> But let's cheer, like, go dubs. Uh, so these kind of things. So this small I talks, like I, I think. Like <laughs> yeah, so they're very um, important. There are small things, but they're, making, they're giving you emotions. They're making people love this chatbot. Because mm -hmm. uh, by the end of the day, it's all about emotions. And you want to have a good emotions about it. Awesome. Well, Anna, this has been wonderful. If you can share one last piece of, like, guiding uh, piece of advice or any last words for the chatbot creators who are watching this and are inspired or like, man, I'm going to create the next awesome warrior chatbot or, or something like that. Um, do, do you have anything to say to those people? That's a great question. I always feel so responsible in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think if you are building a chatbot, um, don't be afraid to do crazy things. Uh, I have a friend, Josh, who designed um, Christian Grey chatbot. I saw. And yeah, I was talking to him and asking, like, how, how you made it? And he said, oh, you know, I haven't even read the book and I haven't even watched the movie. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, ama like, that's impossible. Yeah. Um, no research, no immersion. Exactly, exactly. So I think he just made this crazy experiment um, with the chatbots. And you understand, you, you use this bot and you understand that you are as a bot maker, you understand how it works. Like mm -hmm. it, it's, it's giving a question on a question, but at the same time, it feels so realistic. So you just don't understand how it works. So my uh, probably inspirational uh, sentence would be, uh, don't be afraid to be crazy. Don't be afraid to play with the crazy things. Um, chatbots, it's a new thing. Nobody knows where it's going to end up, how it's going to be immersed in the market, uh, mm -hmm. who's going to be using it the most in what cases. So you have all these opportunities and chances for now to create something that was never there before. So I think it's a great, it's like a blue ocean. 
um, instead of Red Ocean of apps, for example, or websites. Mm-hmm. So be brave and just, just go with it. Go with your crazy ideas. That's awesome. Blue Ocean, it's time to start fishing. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. All right, Anna, this has been a pleasure talking to you. And I'm so glad that we had a chance to, to talk and for you to share the lessons learned. So thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Bye, Anna. Bye.